Hi everyone, welcome to Brick Vault. this is Mike and welcome to the Top 10 Mocks Sunday episode where we show some of our favorite creations that we've found over the passing week. I usually choose 10 of them and there are always some extras at the end of the episode. All the links for every single mock that I talk about are in the description below. So make sure to check those out, give the designers, the builders a follow because they really deserve it. Before we jump into all this, I want you guys to check out our web store at the www.brickvault.toys, the newest mock that we have added is the E-Wing, a less known rebel starship. Well, I think this one is kind of interesting, more like a Ballastar Galactica vibe to it, but it's the late expanded universe uh, ship. And we have a really cool model for you to check out. Jack made a video on this guy on Friday. So if you wanna get into that, there's a link below. This model is coming from the designer Flying Waffle and every purchase you guys make supports him as well as us here at Brick Vault. So all this makes us continue doing what we do. Thank you so much. And just a quick note, all the fan mock creations that we used to add in those top 10 videos were moved to an entirely new series, the fan mocks that we are trying to publish on every Monday. This one coming tomorrow is actually done by me for the first time. So let me know what you guys think. It was pretty hard. I never done a video like this before with like live commentary, but I hope you like it. I did put my heart into it. So check it out tomorrow morning on Monday. And going into the mocks, the first one here is from our friend Miro Dudas. This is his Pixar Wall E title screen. For you, it may look like a simple build, but if you look closely, he actually kind of nailed the uh, typeface for the Pixar logo, along with the iconic jumping lamp, the desk lamp that is pretty much part of every Pixar movie. And the builds for Wally, Eevee, and the cleaning bot are just great at this scale. I love the use of the blue background, making things even more accurate. Miro is known for putting a lot of effort to making sure all his uh, creations are accurate to the subject matter. Also, this week he made a take on the Flintstones car with the Benny's space crew. This one is really awesome. And even the one with future one minifigures on some sort of a futuristic light track like the ones in Tron. He was also recognized by TV on the Channel 8 news show here in San Diego as a member of the Sandlog. We did not notice that before, so belated congratulations to you Miro. Keep on building, you're awesome. For the next mock on the list, I have Tim Goddard, a very talented and accomplished builder. Coming with the first mech of this episode, this is the EERV or Extreme Environment Reconnaissance Vehicle. At first glance, it looks to me like one of those 50 sci-fi shows robots with just like a full-on metallic body and a weird head with a laser eye of destruction in the middle. But still, I love the beefy pose, great use of grip blink, all in dark bluish gray. And you can almost tell that this thing is saying something, greetings earthlings, I come in peace, sort of. Maybe he actually does, because if you open this thing up, there you have the pink spaceman minifigure from that beloved spaceman pack with Benny. And I'm sure that the smiley face pink spaceman has nothing but peace intentions. This next build is coming from a builder I was not really aware of until now, which is a shame. Eero Okonen has designed the Havoc Dissect 4. Does the name for this battle lady of some sort? Uh, feels like maybe a samurai version of her, I'm not really sure. But this is the original lore of his, original concept. I gotta praise the use of pieces here, those balloon elements for the hair from that Ninjago set in the orange-brown color work great for that type of expression. Everything is brick built so you can see her armor. And you have to appreciate the use of that rubbery string for some sort of laser scythe blades at the tip of her weapon. This type of character building is quite distinguishable for this designer and in this series of red battlesuit mistresses he developed at least two of them, Sora Swift as well as Radiant Exert. The next one is a super cute build coming from Joxon. This is the Gekula Frog. Again, not the first design of an otherworldly weird creature for this designer. Super creative flicker page of a person I did not know about again before. But looking back at that frog, you gotta say that this is probably the most thoughtful piece usage for that head of hers. I think that must be some sort of a bionicle armor piece. Love the use of matching one by one blue cheese elements in the knees of, uh, of the creature. And I think it's pretty possible for how small it is. Quite outstanding color combination as well. Contrasting eyes and I guess there is nothing you cannot really like about this mock. Seriously, check out his other builds because every one of them has something very, very special to it. The next build on the list is the most atmospheric, eerie one that I have found this week. Superb use of photography and Photoshop elements. This is coming from Revan New. The title is Lantern Mecha's Islands. 
Now, this builder is quite into very gothic, hard and grotesque games like Bloodborne or Dark Souls. And I think this type of heavy atmosphere is really soaking through the smog. I think it actually might be from Bloodborne. I played the game a bit, but never finished it. It's really hard. I think the character on the boat is reminding me of the protagonist of the game. But looking in the background, you see that fog uh, just layering over what seems to be some sort of a metallic rocky island. And the lantern mechas from the title are maybe stalking the uh, character or just our normal inhabitants of the island checking out what is approaching them from the water. I really wonder if the glowing heads are the effect of a photoshop or is there a light brick in there? If it is, that is a whole new level of awesome. Absolutely stunning creativity and I'm really glad I bumped into the smoke this week. This next one here is scary and amazing at the same time. That's the KA-9 police support drone coming from the designer Red Space Cat. And this thing is based on the famous Boston Dynamics Spot Mini robot. Now, these guys are viral, amazing, showing up in all parts of internet as they develop. The current version of the Spot Mini is an amazing dancing robot which steals hearts of everybody. But Red Space Cat took it a step further and showed the vision of what probably everybody is expecting at some point. A mechanized, weaponized version of these guys. But for now, let's enjoy this model. Love the build for the feet with the rubbery Technic connectors. And the posability is great given the simplicity of this model, plus the added touch of no studs at all. A few years ago you would say it's a sci-fi build but now seeing the working actual models of such very similar design the whole concept makes you really think. And being in topic I want to jump into the next uh, quite insane looking mech of this week's lineup. This one is coming from very talented Marco Marozzi, an excellent mech builder. Every single one of his is so unique that I highly encourage you guys to check out his Flickr page. His designs are second to none when it comes to military mechs in my opinion. The newest one is KZ1 mech, possibly the beefiest I've been seeing for a while now. Might be even an overkill given the fact that those legs are bigger than its body and the armament is not that crazy. Just to um, autocannons. With the amount of weight this thing can probably carry, you would expect some more type of uh, rocket pods or some sorts, but still the looks and the possibility of this thing is something you would really maybe like to see in a video game of sorts. I am still baffled how he manages to get those shapes right and the usage of pieces of him is again second to none. He also made a different version of this guy and the logotype on this shoulder may explain the beefiness of it in some way. Next one here is also stunning and again coming from a designer I did not know about before. I'm having a lot of discoveries this week which is awesome because I can have more people to follow. The nickname of the designer is Poor Disadvantaged and this uh, build is called Hakan the Explosive. First impression, something from the game Doom or maybe something from the Warhammer lore, but I think Doom is more appropriate. We have some sort of a berserker demon with a massive weapon in its hand, absolutely stunning color combination with red for the skin and metallic dark gray for everything else. Some of these parts I'm not really even sure if it's Lego at all, if it is. Those are some insane mods from Bionicle or just some sort of technique. The weapon itself looks like something a guy from ID Software Games would not be ashamed to carry around. And that is just one build of many from the designer I haven't seen before. Superb uniqueness on every single one of them. And and some insane building techniques to go with that. And for the next mock on this week's list I have something I would easily place in the top 10 mocks of my personal ranking of all time. Period. I'm being a massive Ken Block Gimkana uh, fan, if you don't know what it is, it's a series of YouTube massively successful videos about drifting and insane cars in different episodes. And the build from Lachlan Cameron is depicting the newest Ford Mustang Hoonigan Hoonicorn version 2. Now for some context, this thing has 1400 brake horsepower and the designer made an excellent, superbly accurate model of the car. Plus it's RC, yes, it drives. I'm not sure if I've seen this designer before, which is possibly the fourth discovery for this episode, maybe I have. But he's been doing Technic cars for quite a while now, it's like 20 pages of amazing models. This must be the crown jewel of what he has designed so far. And I'm gonna recommend you guys two things. Go to his Flickr page, check out the entire gallery, it's like 40-50 pictures of amazingness. And after that go see Gimkana on YouTube and also the Gimkana behind the scenes series on Amazon. If you're even a slight fan of cars, this is an absolute must watch before anything else about cars. Plus the Grand Tour. 
The model itself has a lot of chrome elements. If there's anything custom, I don't really care. The whole car is a 1965 customized the brim Mustang anyway. Recreated engines to the point, uh, decals all around the place, accurate to the real model. I cannot even guess how much effort was put into it to make it look that good. I was honestly gazing for like 20 minutes on the pictures to pick up the best ones, so see for yourself, the link is below. For me, it is really hard to top that build for this episode, so I'm just gonna do a one that's kind of exequo with uh, this week's lineup. Coming from Martin Lata, the same designer that uh, provided the amazing T800 bust for our web store, we have the Ultimate Collector Series ETA 2 Actis Class Interceptor, the most commonly known Jedi Starfighter or Jedi Interceptor. Now, as far as UCS builds go it is really hard to nail some of the shapes or textures or surfaces of those ships with the correct brick colors or correct shaping in many areas and this small nimble ship has few points that uh, are really hard to nail. I absolutely love the build for the canopy the curves just merged into the single perspective point in that front canopy and once you open it you have an amazing build for the pilot's seat along with the controls and I think that is a great example of not too much, not too little. This design was a work in progress for a while so we are super happy to see it finished and it definitely lives up to the Ultimate Collector series tag. And that was the last mock for this week's list I wanted to talk about for you guys. There was a ton of other mocks I found uh, during my search so I'm gonna link everyone's Flickr account right below in the description. Make sure to give those guys a follow, every single one deserves a lot of clicks. As I mentioned in the beginning, tomorrow on Monday as of this publishing is the um, Fan Mox episode 4, I believe. This one was again made by me for the first time, so let me know what you guys think. It's a bit of a long episode, 35 minutes, but hey, you sent like 70 or 80 emails, that was a lot to go through. So tune in tomorrow morning, I hope you like this one. Thank you so much for watching this Top 10 Mox episode. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and click the bell button for notifications. It was Mike, and I'll see you next time on Brick Vault.